Welcome to Murph 2019. These guys flew me out here. They, they're sponsoring the trip. Um, so thank you for that. Much appreciated that, that I get to be here. It's uh, man, it's been crazy. Uh, what, what what have people been excited about here? So I would say that start of the star of the show is the SL1 we brought here, which is just about to ship. We are finishing the beta test and working everything in, and in, in just a couple of small weeks or a couple of short weeks, we are shipping it out to the users. Yeah, so it's practically ready, and the machine here is printing. Um, at least today, yesterday, apparently people were messing with it. Oh yeah, I mean, you, you saw how many people was here uh, were here yesterday, so we just didn't have much time, and everybody is playing with the nice LCD. You know, uh, it's same with the it's same with the Mark III where everybody is pushing the confirmation button, which is actually the reset button. <laughs> yeah, you should have some sort of a of a button lock on these. Yes, yes. Um, so okay, let's let's actually get started with the SL1 because I guess that's the big news. The MK3s, yeah, we'll cover that too. But um, the SL1 is is like the big new thing. It's your first resin printer. Is is it SLA? What's what's the deal there? So it's called uh, MSLA, it's Mass SLA with LCD. So basically you shine with UV, uh, UV LEDs through an LCD screen and it hardens the, hardens the resin. So it's, uh, it's technically our first uh, resin, resin printer, but as I said, a company uh, joined our team and they had uh, over five years experience in making those. I'm pretty confident that it's not like first try. Plus, you, you, like you're saying you, these are shipped out to beta testers out in the wild. You've tested yeah. those internally. That's like yeah. you did the whole thing. Yeah, maybe maybe we chose a little um, uh, beer name uh, with the beta test because it's just like checking if it's ready for the mass production. But um, yeah, but it's it's uh, kind of different approach than we have with the Mark III. We didn't want to go to the race to the bottom, you know, to compete on the price level. So we, we said that, okay, let's make it nice and affordable. And I hope it went very well. So you can see the, the printer weighs almost 13 kilos. You can kill We're probably going to edit that out, but uh, yeah. So what, what, what can you do as far as details go? Because I mean, it's, it's not a laser printer, you mentioned that, um, but it's got a pretty high resolution LCD in there. Um, what, what are like the, the, the specs on this thing? So um, it is a 1440p uh, display, so it's 2.5K. So uh, 5.5 inches across, right? Yes, exactly. But also, a lot of people are mentioning the, the SLA that it has nicer, smoother edges. But we have anti-aliasing both in X and Y and also in, in Z between the layers. So, which, which you can't do on the, on the SLA, which means that you have, you have a smoother surface. So you're like partially curing some parts. Yes, exactly. And if, if, if you set it right for the resin, it smooths everything out. And uh, you, you can have uh, details of the models, but you can see that I don't think we, we have any like voxel effect, as you can see in the, in the forum labs um, advertisements about the LCD printers. Right, yeah. Um, so it's, it's resin based, but so my experience with resin printers so far has been it's a mess, right? You, you have to dig into the parts, and you, you, even though you're wearing gloves, you still get resin everywhere. Um, that's kind of your approach to curb that, right? Yes. Uh, so this is our curing and washing machine, uh, CW uh, or CW1. Basically, you can take the platform out and put it into the tank, which uh, uh, which clears it with IPA. So, so technically, you never have to touch a, a raw resin part. Yes, yes. And also it's a magnet, uh, it's magnetic stir instead of ultrasound because from our experience if you have like harsh ultrasonic bath with IPA, if you have something very... So I, IPA, not the India Pale Ale, that is isopropyl alcohol. Yeah. So if you have something with, uh, with very small detail like this, in, in the ultrasonic bath they can just break off. So this is uh, from our experience much more gentle and it can, it can print uh, or it can clean the models uh, very nicely. And, and, and then once they're cleaned, you can actually take this out. This, yes. by the way, looks like a, like a deep fryer pan uh, there, yeah. Well, we, we, chose, we chose to use a uh, normal gastro pan. Right. So you can have, or you, you can easily buy this for $3. And you can have many of it, it if you are uh, cleaning different resins. You can, uh, you can have gastro pan for each of them. So, so these are actually deep fryer parts? Uh, it's it's from uh, yeah it's from gastro industry because I think if if we would try to make it 
uh, you know, our own custom version. We don't want to lock people to just uh, buying stuff from us. And that same with the that same with the resin. Because you, you take that out. Can, can we leave that out for a second? So you take you take that out, and then you have your wash model. You put it back in this in the CW1. You have your UV lamps on the back, I guess, on the back, and also on these arms. And you just close it, and it rotates and cures the part. And you have programs for all the resins. And yeah, that's a, that's also one of the uh, one of the parts I wanted to mention. Uh, we are we are shipping our own resin, which is manufactured for us. But also, uh, even if you download the, the beta of the slicer right now, you can see that there's tens, if not hundred, uh, presets for different resins because we don't want to lock everyone just to our resin. It's, it's like with the Mark III or with, with the with the filament printers where you have the presets yes. for other materials, yes. but you, you can also like tune the settings to your own yes, stuff. Yes. Um, one, one question be because I'm just seeing it is the CW1 running Marlin? Uh, no. Oh, I mean, um, it is uh, it is running uh, something similar to Marlin, but it's made from scratch because I mean you don't you don't need to run G code on this, so it just you know you're, you're just turning on the lights and moving a stepper to rotate the platform. So you don't you don't need to have like very very diff uh, very hard to maintain firmware. All right. Um, so one last finishing closing thought on on the SO one. You did a few things because I mean, technically, you look at this as like, okay, this is nothing different than the the one how duplicators or you know, it's got a Z axis and an LCD and that's it. But you, you do have a few things in here that not every machine has that kind of makes it perform better and more easily yeah. usable. So uh, we have the tilting of the bat. We are matching the. We we have custom light on LED uh, panel in it. We, uh, with, in the production, we are matching the LCD to the LED, so we know uh, how much power you are getting through, so you can set, set that up in the printer. So each of them uh, prints, prints the same. And also, it's just the sheer quality of the build. This is all made from like melt aluminium, and you know it's proper sturdy machine, because uh, actually, when you are peeling off the layer, the, the forces can be quite strong. And if it's you know like flimsy sheet metal, uh, the, the the printer flexes itself when it when it tries to pull the uh, pull the object from the FVP film. Um, and for the for the process that it takes to print something on the SO one, it's going through the same slick 3 r software that you're putting out. There's just a different process on that. Um, and then the, the machine itself has the touchscreen on it, so basically just put it on a, on a USB drive, and the machine does the rest. Uh, so it it has Wi-Fi and Ethernet. You, you use Slick 3R. Oh um, God, we need to we need to do something about that name. But. Yeah, uh, the the R3 P cord guys are right next to you. So. Oh my God. <laughs> and uh, either you can send it directly from the slicer to the internal storage, or you can uh, you can put it on the USB and, and do it here. And yeah, we've done uh, or our team done very good work in implementing the the SLA supports and SLA printing into the slicer. So I'm quite quite happy about that. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of users will be happy to use it uh, with other printers too. Okay, so it, it is still compatible. It's it's like it's like the stick to it. Uh, that, it, that it can generate G code for other machines as well. It's not just limited to to the so SO one. Basically, you have a set of PNG files yeah. and and some meta information how to how to use them. Yeah, uh, that is great news. So, open source? Yes, no? Yes, of course. Okay, yeah, pe people were, were like, oh, he's not publishing anything, but. Well, you know that's that, that's how we do it. I mean, I, I well, guess I guess you've not published anything yet. Yeah, once yeah. you know, it always sucks if somebody makes your product sooner than 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 you ship it because we do a, through a rigorous process of testing, and if we just publish the files, some somebody will start making it and don't bother with testing. So we we are releasing with uh, first units going to the going to the customers. Okay. So so shipping times you mentioned like the few weeks. Uh, I, I looked at the website yesterday. It's like orders will ship in June. Uh, well, you know it, it estimates when you order now, and it estimates the um, it takes in, into account the production we we have scheduled, and it lets you know when the printer you order at that moment will ship. All right, so that is SL1 news, um, but you're bringing like more more filament news. Uh, you guys are showing the MK3S. Let me just move the tripod real quick so we actually have that in view. There we go. The Mark III S. Yes. The the McKess, if you want to pronounce it your way. Uh. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, anyways, so this is, uh, this is our yearly, yearly upgrade based, based on our feedback we got from users. And, and you, you're actually removing features. What do you mean? The filament sensor. Well, uh, there's different ways, to, different ways to look at it. Uh, the old sensor, it actually could not only sense the presence, but also the movement of the filament. And we really wanted to uh, keep that in, but actually uh, it wasn't as critical based on the feedback from, from the users. But uh, the fact that some of the filaments uh, had hard time being detected by the by the IR laser there, and I mean, you, you, it did make a ton of improvements to just the way that the sensor was read. Um, we, 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 we tried many ways how to make it. You know, you can do it in di indirect. So we basically, you can have like a, a bearing spinning over the filament. But also, the sensor was very fragile uh, because there's a lens. You, you cannot cover it with anything. We tried. Um, optically bonding uh, some protective glass over it, but it just, uh, just wasn't uh, so durable. And we, we actually had a lot of users like breaking it just by handling it, because you are building something for the first time and you, you place it wrong on the table and you crack the, you crack the glass. So this is much more robust and at the end uh, more, more people will uh, enjoy the benefits of the filament sensor without much less hassle. Um, I had mine turned off because I actually never needed it. But uh, yeah, what what other changes do you have? Is it is it finally shipping with a coded PI bed? Is is that saga coming uh, to an end anytime soon? So actually, the next week, uh, I guess the week which this video will be published, we are shipping last 1,600 vouchers uh, to, to to guys who uh, who are eligible for that, and then we will start selling it again. But you know, it's it's not an obtainium as some people claim it because there's over 20,000 in the wild. So. We, 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 we made quite a lot. Some of them start rusting, but that's just the stuff that you have to figure out. So, well, you, um, actually, we, as we are shipping everywhere, and if you are somewhere in Amazonia and you are close to the sea and you have like the sea breeze, everything starts to rust. You know, even, even stainless steel starts to rust. But we, we developed some coatings uh, below, below, the, below the PI, which prevents the rusting. And we are actually testing the sheets in the in the salt chamber. So, and as it, as it, as it is consumable in, in those harsh conditions, it, it should last seven months without without rust. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, you, you can you can still put glue stick over it, I guess. Yeah, but in the rust doesn't affect any 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 properties. But when you uh, in in Europe, uh, it, it will last forever. Yeah. Obviously, pretty much, uh, unless you drive a nozzle into it. With some, some other upgrades, you know, as we are gradually improving stuff. So during the Mark III production, we switched to the, to the genuine Gates belts and stuff. So, you know, with the Mark III S, all are coming with this. And just recently, we, we, we had a custom power supply made, from us, made for us by Delta. So that's, that is pretty exciting. Delta. Oh, so same functionality, but neater package, and it's black now. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and also it's Delta. They are doing all the power supplies for Apple and stuff. So. Ah, oh, Samsung are making some of those. Okay. Well, that, that's what Delta yeah. told us. <laughs> yeah, but, but Delta is, is reputable. Before that, it was a, a supply you, you sourced yourself but made sure the quality was okay yeah. and all that. Yeah, we, we, we are testing everything still in house. Yeah. Well, you, you are literally continuously testing them. So yes. that's something with the, with the Mark III S. Yes, of course, your print form runs on those. Are, are you doing. I mean, the SL1 doesn't have any SLA printed parts on that. Are you seeing any similar testing fashion to the to the filament printers with that? Do you have a, an SL1 print farm? Uh, we have definitely SL1 print farm just to test all the resins and you know to develop the firmware, because uh, as I said, one of the biggest advantages uh, of printing parts for us is that we test continuously the printer. And actually, I don't know what was the last time we were at our our space, but we now have. 500 printers in the farm, <laughs> and we actually, as uh, everybody can have printer in the office, and we we did accounting, and we have another 450 around the office because we are, we are just reaching 400 people. Oh wow! And wow! So we have over 900 printers uh, in the building running alone. So we are quite good at testing everything. 
Um, I mean, that, that's something that you guys definitely do with the printed parts, of course. Um, and you're now also, of course, running all your own filament. Yes, yes. We just recently got our sixth line because, you know, we always think that we are ready for, for the income influx of orders. But since we, since we launched the, the, the Prishamant, it kind of is sold out everywhere all the time. Even, even the Amazon, they can't even have it in stock because everything they get is it's already pre-ordered. It's already pre-ordered. But we are, we are taking care of that because we have another seven lines coming in the uh, next, uh, next few months. I hope we will be able to keep up this time. And can you maintain that, what, what, what did you claim, 0.02, mil, 0.02 millimeters uh, accuracy? Is, yeah. is that still something that's, that's being kept up? Yes, of course. I mean, it's it's not done, but you cannot rush this. And the, the way the system is set up, um, as we gather all the data, and, and we are using, we are actually for the new lines, we are even upgrading to much much fancier uh, laser uh, diameter measurement yes, device, exactly. from, whatever, yeah. from from Kian. So the frequency of the measurement is much higher. So we are upgrading from like six uh, six thousand hertz to. I, if I'm not mistaken, around 20,000 hertz. And we are storing all and analyzing all the data. That's quite a, a bit of data to maintain. <laughs> yes. and, but, but I would say that uh, the success of the Prusament makes me very happy. Yeah. And especially, again, because it is an open source machine. Uh, yeah, and people can, can build their own, right? Uh, oh, foreshadowing. Um, Okay, we were talking about Prusa and you were talking about open source. Oh, 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 oh. I, mean, I, I thought I thought he said is it the Prusa Mendel? Oh yeah, yes, and, yeah. and and a lot of people are. It ties in, right? Yeah, a lot of people are building their own, yeah. and I'm very happy to see all the mods. People are taking it to another level, which I'm I'm very proud that they can do, and uh, I'm interested to see how this will go with the SL1, how they will mod it. I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously because it's not 3D printed parts. It's, it's going to be a bit trickier to actually take apart and, and kind of mod it, but yes. still. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, some of the mods for the Mark III, I would never have imagined that these, these things are possible. You put it out in the wild and yeah, it's always fun to, to see what, what people actually yeah. do with it. We have a few more things uh, in our sleeve, which we will be releasing in upcoming weeks. Not printers, but I'm quite excited about this. And yes, we will have. We also have big celebration coming up, so make sure. Make Do you guys have an anniversary? Uh, I won't go into the details, but it will be out in I would say in two weeks. So okay. Make sure to watch our YouTube channel. All right, looking forward to that. So yeah, uh, again, thanks for sponsoring this trip. Uh, it's been good fun, and uh, enjoy the last half day of the show. It is yeah. Saturday. Uh, well, no, I'm losing track. It is Sunday noon, and people are starting to pack up. You can see the Delta behind us has already yeah, been yeah. taken apart. Yeah, we are going to the airport in a couple of hours, yeah. and you know I will savor that 17 hours on the on the airport with great pride. <laughs> All right. Yeah, have a good trip. And uh, thanks for your time. No, here, here. That. <laughs>